up into the wind. Yep. One on it, one on it. Yep, grabbed it. That was so cool, man. Right there. You think it's weed, and then it starts running. Here it goes again. Look at that. So we're about to be hooked up. Ready? Wow. Okay. That was probably my craziest timing ever. Oh, yep. Oh, shivers. Oh, I knew when he ate that it was good. I was going to try to do an intro with the with the studies off, but they need to go on. G'day, g'day everyone, and welcome back to another video. Now today, I'm out here doing my favourite style of fishing, which I haven't been able to do for quite some time, so I'm excited to uh, to do it. Um, we're going to be doing some flats fishing, top water for whiting and some brim. Now, I'm not too sure on how the outcome of today is going to go because this is actually this video is going to be filmed and hopefully posted just after my big flathead video. So the water here is still very very stained, very dirty. From all the from all the rains we had so i'm gonna be trying my luck out here on the sand flats and hopefully we can get onto some fish obviously pretty much just said it in the intro but the target is brim and whiting and we'll take a flat it if it decides to come along it's about 10 30 11 o'clock in the day no wind well i lied there actually is a little bit of wind as you can see on the water but it's very very gentle nice overcast day it should have the fish feeding off the top so without further ado I'm gonna put this on my chest mount and uh, let's get into some fishing. Enjoy this, enjoy this time outside and see if we can get amongst them. All right, let's get into it. So uh, you're probably wondering, Josh, what are you doing back in the car after you just said you were gonna be doing some flats fishing? Well, I actually fished that flat for two and a half to three hours with not a single bite, not one single bite, which is pretty disappointing because it looked very good. I don't blame the fish though because the water was very very dirty so we've made a move to the mouth of a place and um obviously mouth meaning where the sea meets the lake and the f and the fresh salt water comes into the lake and we're going to be trying to fish around here seeing where the fish are at if they're at the front if they're feeding at the back clearly they weren't feeding at the back because we just didn't catch anything so we're going to try our luck at the front i'm carrying on like an absolute pork chop i don't even know what i'm saying anymore so let's just get out of this car and uh get into some fishing Hopefully we catch some. Let's go. Almost got a treble in the seat there. That would have been a nightmare. Well, where well, you get a load of the wind over here. There's a much different scenario at the back. There's the ocean right there. This place has actually recently opened up as well because of all the rain. Plenty of weed beds, plenty of sand flats. I actually might give the top water a go here real quick. I was going to put on a little plastic after fishing around the hard body. Just want to see if there's any whiting at the front. Make it a little bit harder to cast with this wind, but these slippery dogs are pretty good at casting. Oh, oh, look at the whiting on it. Lots of little whiting. Oh, we're on. Oh, yep, they're on it again, just little ones. Third time's a charm. Wow, okay. It's already clear that the fish are at the front. 
All right, well, I'm going to wade my way out a little bit. I say wade, but I'm currently got on trackies. So we got the Josh Classic, wet trackies and shoes. No socks today, just shoes. Have a go up into the wind. Yep, here we go. <laughs> oh, look at the size of this guy. Are you serious, mate? He's, he's, oh, I almost just got a treble in my finger. He's half the size of the lure. Tiny little whitey. Now, see, these are the ones that get your fingers, though. You've got to be careful. Oh, seriously, almost just got me again. I'm going to put it on the ground. I'm not even going to touch it. Just goes to show, though, they're not afraid to hit these lures. Like, you'd think that's a pretty big pretty big lure for a whiting this size but these guys when they see a little flicking prawn on the surface they don't really hesitate and would you look at that very little micro whiting literally the size of my hand see you champ I can see some whiting flashes in front of me so I'll do a wind assisted cast and bring it up this way yep they're on it Yep, there we go. That might be slightly better, unless he's fouled. Oh, look at all these mates. You can't see that because i got polarised sunnies, but stacks of mates with him. Another little whiting. Look at you. Literally the same size as the last. Stacks of little guys around here. Look at that. Fish number two. Absolutely micro whiting. Jumping out of my hands. But no, I'm pretty stoked. Although it's very small, we did just want to catch some fish today. And with number two hitting the deck this early on, and we've just started fishing here, that's a pretty good sign on what's to come. So let's get this little fella back in the water. There you go, Mr. Whiting. Swimming off right there. Fished around for a little bit more with no extra takers on that surface lure. So we switched up to the diving lure. I decided to chuck around, which is a, my go-to 95 millimeter diver double clutch, which I haven't used in a little while on the flats. Not that I've really done much flats fishing for big flatty, but um, caught a 94 centimeter flathead off the beach with this. So it definitely catches the big ones. 3000 Caldia, Daiwa Caldia, the new one, and uh, Miller Rods Vibe Freak. Give it a give it a work. There we go. We've picked up a flathead. Already, that was pretty quick actually. He's gotta be foul hooked. It feels huge, but it's not. You can see it. Yeah, under the belly. Oh. Here he goes. Get him up here, mate. Should've brought my pliers with me because you're a micro one. Let's take you for a walk, okay? How's that for a beautiful little flatty? It's pretty, it's pretty funny the way he's hooked actually, and flathead will occasionally do that, where they come along and instead of eating it, they'll actually try and sit on it for some reason. And uh, that's exactly what's happened with this fish. It's come along, tried to sit on it, and it wasn't a real fish, it was a lure. So let's get it back in the water anyways. Get back out there. Look at those colors. Beautiful. Oh, 
there's another one. Number two, and this one's actually pretty good. Oh wow, this one's very good. I'm backing that drag off a little bit. Much better fish. Oh, that is a cracker and it just come off. Oh no. That thing would have been 60. Easily, that was a good fish. Oh, instantly just got hit. Oh, again. Found the little zone. Another one. Oh, come off again. That was a big one. Oh, you got to be kidding me. This drag is just way too tight. Bro, that was another big one. Again. We're on again. Are you kidding me? The little one. Oh. Right, we got hit once and then straight after another big hit and then another big hit. And they're all in this little channel bit. Just gave him a quick and easy release. One just followed it all the way up. He's gonna eat it, watch this. He just followed it all the way. Dude, they are everywhere. There we go, that's a good one. Back that drag a bit this time. Yep, that's a big one. You are much better. Fish, these things are on. The flathead are fired up at the moment. Come up here. Beautiful fish. After being hit and dropping that many fish, let position that camera. We landed one and he's gone 54. Very nice. Take a good look at that for a beautiful sand flat fish. 54 centimetre flathead on that dial with double clutch in the black and gold. Very, very nice. I also forgot to mention, I own a 15 pound braid and a 14 pound litre. And that 14 pound litre held up very nice. That is a gorgeous fish. Send it back on its way. with there being no freight on the line from all those fish we're good to keep casting and uh i'm feeling a bit of an 80 centimetre flatty in my bones right now feeling like there could be a very large flathead sitting around here i just dropped two really big ones before that one just then definitely in the zone that's all i can say
one on it, one on it. Yep, grabbed it. That was so cool, man. <laughs> right there. Just watched him follow it. Just stalked it right up and ate it. And that is another really good size one. That's larger than the last one we just pulled in, for sure. Are you serious, man? Look at that. That is a healthy flatty. Very healthy fish. I might just try and release this one in the water. Saves me having to walk back to shore over there. I'm probably going to get a spike in my finger though. Come on. Come on, big girl. Mate, that one's up around the 58, 59 mark for sure. That is a beaut. There we go. It's off. She's at my feet. There she goes. Still no fraid. Very impressed. All right, well, while I'm on an absolute flathead catching spree, um, I'm gonna explain how I'm working this lure. Now you're seeing me work it the whole time, but all I'm doing is just a kind of a draggy sort of twitch. So I'm like just doing two jabs of that rod and the lure is just gonna vibrate, stop, vibrate, stop. And the flathead are mainly grabbing it when it's paused. You go, oh just then perfect example jib jib what am i saying drag drag pause drag drag pause and like i was just saying those fish will more than likely eat it on the on the sit like what it's just sitting there so there's two jags let it sit let it sit and there is just so many flatty along here this is a prime spot to be working though. So you, right here is a nice sand flat area. As you can see, it's about knee deep. And as we go over here, it starts dropping off a little bit like closer to waist deep, but it's got more ridges and little gaps in the ground. And that's where the flatted sit. They sit in those gaps and wait for bait to go right over them. Perfect ambush point. And I don't know how well you can see on the other side, but there's actually a sandbar that's out of the water. I just got hit then. Slack line, I could feel it there again. They are everywhere. So as I was just saying, that sandbar is just like, it's just creating this perfect little channel right in the middle. And I haven't even made it to what I think is the prime spot yet. This is just the edges. I reckon just here where there's a bit of weed is where all the fish are going to be sitting. Is that getting followed? I can't tell. I think it is. It is. Grab it. Oh, grab it. Grab it, Flatty. No, it just spooked. I can see it though. I can see it. I can see it. Come on. Another follow up. He hit it. He just hit it. What if I have a go right here? I don't want to walk down any further and spook potentially some big fish. So I'll work this little bit here, which I'll... Oh, wow. Okay. As I was just saying about spooking big fish, I think we've hooked a really good one. Look at that. You think it's weed, and then it starts running. Oh, it starts running. Oh, yep. Yeah. Very, very large one. <laughs> Oh, I can see it in the water. It's a big 70. It's a big 70. That's not loose, loose drag. It's going. They are just piled up here. Come on, big girl. I'm going to slowly start walking to shore. So I've got a fair ways to go. Here it goes again. <sighs> You'd think this thing would be a metery. I've never had a flathead fight this hard in my life. This thing is going crazy. 
can't stop it. How do you still have this much go? I seriously don't get it. What do you do in this situation, honestly? I think you just take your time. <laughs> oh, you are kidding me. You'd think I'd hooked like a pelagic. She's hooked sideways, that's why. I mean, it's still big. Definitely still big, but it's hooked. It's hooked funny. So that isn't the most healthy sand flat fish I've ever seen. Man, oh man. That's solid and it's still fighting. Still trying to get back in the water. Look at that. There we go. Up you come. Let me wet the ground a bit here. There we go. <laughs> Take a look at that tank. <sighs> Beautiful fish. She's not that big actually. Just has a lot of go in it. A lot of go and a beautiful, beautiful colour. Okay, Flatty, relax. There we go. From the tip. Okay, there we go. Exactly on the tip. It's gone 60, 63 and a half. So it's not a huge fish. Not a huge fish. No close up of this one. It can just go straight back. Had a long enough fight. So it's probably pretty tired. There you go, big girl. Look at that. Back to back casts in the same spot. What do you reckon? I reckon fish on. There's another one. Dropped him. <laughs> Same spot where I've been casting the whole time though. My hookup rate probably isn't very good because these have quite rusted trebles on them. They are quite rusted. Oh, instant. As soon as it landed, and it's a big one. Oh, jumping flatty. Jumping flatty and he spat the lure. You're kidding me. Oh, he's actually taken one of the little hooks off the front treble. That's annoying. Wow, that was soon as it landed. Grabbed it. Big jumpy flatty. Oh, he hit it. Oh! Oh! I just wanted to bring that out of the water then. What do you reckon he has another go? No. There we go. Oh, straight to the surface and he's dropped it again. Hmm. I don't know if I have any spare trebles in my bag. I might have to have a look. It's getting a bit silly. Dropping heaps. It's alright, it was only a little. You'd take that on a bad day though. You take anything like that on a bad day. There we go. Have I just dropped that? Oh no, he's still on. Very, very tiny. I thought I just dropped it. I have dropped it. Oh no I haven't, it's, it's just so little. Hooked him in the side. Had a bit of a swipe at it. Just goes to show though, even the tiniest fish 
still don't have any trouble going after this 95 double clutch off he goes i am struggling to stick hooks in a couple of these guys though really contemplating a treble change or even a lure change because i actually have dropped some pretty good ones and if i change up that lure presentation then i'll probably end up going it again now that they've had a go at this and they know that it's not real it'd be a bit silly if they come back although flattered do sometimes come back one that's a goodie have I just dropped that I've just dropped that you know what <laughs> I'm not gonna risk dropping any more fish I'm going ashore and changing these damn trebles that's silly I should have easily I've dropped for like literally 10 fish on a lure with three trebles that's just not right that is not right Although I will be cheeky and have a cast in there. Okay, I think I actually have some that are suitable for the double clutch. Those two look alright. I'll just see if they're going to match up with it. Yeah, they're perfect. They are absolutely perfect quickly change these over to see how our hookup rate see if the hookup rate's any better which I reckon it will be because we just dropped so many fish trebles have just been changed looking nice and sharp and I've rubbed a tiny bit of scent on there just to see if it does anything probably not they're hitting they're hitting this lure with no scent anyways so we'll just see if that can convince some of the fish to come back for another go Oh yeah, hooked up, got the hooks in it this time, actually I haven't landed it so I don't speak too soon, thought it, I thought it was a big one, just a little tacker but no complaints, I'm having an absolute ball right now, that guy actually is the size of the lure, literally, okay don't go crazy, don't go crazy. Got him on that back treble as well. I only had two new hooks, so I changed the, um, see you dude. I changed the front one and the back one. I just kept the middle one as is. There we go. Oh, dropped him. There's one. Oh, loosen that drag, that's a goodie. Oh yeah, another good one. I've got a nice hook set on that as well. Like, look at this ground, it's just so perfect. You've got this weed here with nice little patchy bits in between. It's just prime spot for these flathead. And we've hooked into another very, very nice one. I thought it might have been fouled. It is, it's foul hooked in the side. Still going crazy though. No matter the size of these fish, they will never get boring to catch. Super, super fun, especially on the flats here. And uh, the colours of them. The colours on them are just beautiful. Just trying to get a nice uh, hold up there, <laughs> but uh, you can't always get nice hold ups, so he's off. Well, how's that? One of the smallest fish of the day. Actually, it wasn't that small to be honest. I can't lie, it wasn't that small. Probably a pan size, but um, he's actually put freight in the line. 
So we're going to have to cut and retie that. And if you don't know what frayed is, I've explained it in another video. It's basically where there's a weak point in your line that gets created by structure or fish. And in that case, flathead. Um, they have pretty serrated mouths and they also have lots of spikes on them. And over time, if you catch a fish and it starts rubbing on the line, as you're fighting that fish over time, um, the line will start to wear down. So then when you hook the next fish, your line is going to be weaker than obviously what it previously was. And um, especially if it's a big one, it can be very heartbreaking when you get a bit of afraid and you don't change your leader because that can sometimes be the reason you snap off. So it's always just good to play the smart game. It's always smart to play the safe game. That's what I was trying to go for. And just cut and retie that. It takes two seconds and you won't be crying when you lose a dream fish because of that reason. I haven't lost a dream fish to that reason, but I have lost a lot of fish just because I got lazy and didn't retie it. And we're about to be hooked up. Ready? Wow. Okay. That was probably my craziest uh, timing ever. We're about to be hooked up. Bang. Flatty on. That could actually be the same one. Wouldn't surprise me. Sometimes these fish aren't the brightest. I'm going to keep the hooks in for this hold up. Okay. Oh no, that is not what I want. Not what I wanted. As it's just got one of the trebles stuck in the bit of rope off the pliers. There we go. Beautiful little flatfish with some stunning colours. And it's got the nicest spots, perfect for camouflaging. Especially on these sand flats around these weeds. They just suit right into the bottom. I knew you were going to go that. do that again. <sighs> okay, well... How on earth do I do this? I've got literally no choice but to take it to shore as the treble has gone and wrapped itself a million and one times around that rope courtesy of this fish. That is very deep there. As tempting as it is to change lure, I'm not going to change, I, I probably shouldn't change up my lure if this is working as, as effective as it is right now. That last fish damaged the, the middle treble, so I uh, tied on a bigger one. I've actually had to take it off one of the other lures that I had in my box, so it's slightly bigger. That won't affect the swimming action at all. Also had to retie my leader. Oh, not retie my leader, sorry, just had to cut, cut it off because it had a bit of frayed. Also, another thing that's very important when walking the flats, or just, just fishing in general, is a good pair of polarized sunnies. Now, I, I often get the question, what sunnies I actually use. Um, I use these Mako's. I don't know the exact size and whatever, but um, yeah, these Mako sunnies with a green lens, which is perfect for estuary stuff. There's different lenses, which mean different things. Green is inshore estuary. I think blue is offshore slash the rocks, like just any deep sort of fishing and um, grey or black lens is just casual. So I've got the green lens and because they are polarised I can see straight through the water which is very very handy. It's also very helpful for seeing your line and when there's a lot of glare from the sun these sunnies completely take that away on the water and you can just see right through it. Bit of a game changer actually. I fished for a couple of months without polarised sunnies and when I got them it really changes your whole style of fishing. I started on a 50 buck pair of Samarkis so um, you don't need to go expensive to start with, but definitely these Makos, highly recommend them. All right, nothing along this front flat. Instead of making my way further down that way, I'm gonna make my way further up that way, because that seems to be where the fish are. Seems to be where the fishers are. The last time I actually used this double clutch, I had a lot of people asking me, what to do if their lure keeps hitting the bottom. Well, you actually want it to hit the bottom because what that's going to do is it's going to kick up 
a bit of sand, a bit of dust, and that also helps draw the flatty in. Has a little mullet just went crazy behind me. Um, but if it is digging in too much, raise your rod tip up. So instead of twitching sideways, twitch it up. But kind of don't lift it upwards, you're taking it upwards like this. So not like this, like this. So just go up, up, and that'll get that lure up off the bottom. That's just for the people that were curious and uh, had questions last time I did a video on this lure. But no, I really am actually trying to dig that lure into the sand. That's why I'm doing it sideways. So my lure is, as you hear, every time it clicks drag, that's digging into the sand, which is just what I want. It's exactly what I want, and it's been bloody effective so far. You want it digging in, but you also want it to have the action. Sometimes it digs into the sand and gives off no wobble. So that's when I'll raise the rod tip and we're on. Oh wow, jumpy flatty. Look at that. Jumpy little guy. And these fish are up here feeding in no, no deeper than knee deep. Like, look at this right now. It's my knees there. And this is where the flatty are. Okay, take two. Going back. There's one. There's another one. They're all roughly that same size. Like, there's a couple of real good ones in the mix. Besides that, they're all roughly that same size. Oh. Oh, yep. Oh, shivers. Oh, I knew when he ate that it was good. <laughs> I knew as soon as he ate that, that was a good fish. Is it good or is it fouled? Nope, it's a little one. And he's fouled. The foul hooked little flatties will always get you. Here I am loosening me drag off thinking it's a big one. Oh, oh. It's little but it's not tiny. Like it's a good fish. Just like all these fishermen. Oh, look at that. For a prime example of a very healthy flats fish. Those colours and the condition on that guy is incredible. Look at that. So damn pretty. Nice and thick as well. It's only a small fish, but he's very, very thick. It's been feeding up good. I won't put you through any more stress. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. There's another one. Oh. Oh. Tried to sit on it. Look how it's hooked. Upside down. Once again, he's come along and tried to actually sit on top of that lure. It's funny how the flatties do that sometimes. Okay, yep, putting water all in my face. Instant. Oh, he's come out of the water for it. Oh. There we go. Oh. Nice fish. Thank <laughs> you.
All right, I've got to start making this big walk back to the bag, across the deep water. Well, that's one way to top off probably my most incredible flathead session yet. Very nice 52 centimeter flatty on that double clutch. Dial with double clutch, absolutely slayed them today in that black and gold color. And that is a very, very pretty fish. Just like all these fish we've caught today, beautiful colors coming off that sand flat. And unfortunately for this guy, I've actually decided I'm gonna keep a feed today, so. That'll go perfect on the dinner plate. Absolutely perfect. Get some nice fillets off that. It's nice to keep one from time to time. I am a big advocate for catch and release. But uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with keeping a feed. As long as they're not giants. Obviously, if they're over 70 centimeters, always put them back. 52 centimeters, perfect eating. Made it back in the car, and I'm just about to head off home. But before I do, I just want to say a massive thanks to everyone for watching till the end of the video, if you made it this far. I hope you all enjoyed. One thing I did want to point out real quick, or just say, um, I have been fishing this spot for quite a long time, and every time I've come here, I've only ever caught one fish, two fish, or majority of the time, no fish. So today, catching as many fish as I did was a very big surprise. It's actually quite funny how fish work, because some days you can come here and have a day like I had today, catch 10 plus fish, and then other days, absolutely nothing. And then the next day, nothing. Next day, nothing. Then the next day, maybe one. And then after that you might get another 10. It's just, it's so all over the place and it's crazy how they're constantly on the move. I definitely am glad I made the most of it today and was able to catch the amount of fish that I caught because it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen again for quite some time. That's just how fishing goes. You don't always catch a whole lot of fish. Now that I'm done going on about my little rant, I'm just about to turn this car off and head off home. I think it's 5 to 5.30, so it's getting very late in the day, very, very hungry. I don't know if I explained in the intro what time I got out here, but I've put a lot of hours in today, so I'm going to get out of here. Cheers, everyone, for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all that good stuff you usually do on the videos. I'm going to pop my Instagram up on the screen just here. It's josh.fishing.oz. Give it a follow. Check it out. Do whatever you want. It's there. Um, once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to go eat this flatty. Very tasty fillets. All right, I'm getting out of here.